Hey guys, it's Ed Bolian, and welcome to my personal channel. Now, I spend a lot of time on the VinWiki channel telling the stories about the things that happen to me in my cars, but I don't get a lot of time there to talk about exactly why I love the cars that I do. Now, we've been doing these What Would You Buy videos that give a little bit of a chance to rationalize our insane love for some of these cars, but I wanted to spend some time today talking about what is literally my favorite car in the world. This is my 2007 Lamborghini Murcielago LP640 with a manual gearbox. It's a car I fell in love with immediately as they released it, and obviously I've done a lot to this one to make it look exactly like the one we fell in love with watching the press car on Top Gear. So today, I want to take us for a drive in it, talk about why I love this car and why I think you might too. Now, like when I buy most of my cars, when I bought this one, it was in absolutely terrible condition. I love that because it kind of gives me license to drive them as much as I want, rack up the miles, and not worry a whole lot about it. And that's how you should own these cars. And it's easier when someone else has maybe done a little bit of damage to them to begin with. So this car needed to be mostly repainted when I bought it about two years ago as a black LP640. That was a very common color for them back then, and no one in the U.S. ordered this Verde Draco color. And I'd always wanted one, but obviously I couldn't make one appear unless I painted it. So since the front had been very poorly resprayed, painted with a brush pretty much, there were some holes in the rear quarter panels that needed to be repaired, and the rockers were chewed up. So apart from the doors and the roof, I was going to have to repaint the whole car anyway, so it just made sense to change the color. I thought about 30th Anniversary Purple. I thought about a Rancio Atlas. I love orange cars, but this became the choice, and I couldn't be any happier. We also went with the Titanium Hercules. Hercules wheels. It's, all, it's an all black interior, which made the color change a lot more easy because I didn't have to worry about something that made sense with the stitching or anything else like that. Full interior carbon and obviously a manual transmission. So this is one of 29 US manual LP640s. They do tend to keep going up in value, so that's been great. And when I sold the last one, I knew I couldn't be without it. So this was the car to have. I think it's the car to keep, and it's definitely the car to drive. So let's take it out. People can talk all they want about Carrera GTs and LFAs being the best sounding cars in the world. They are not. A howling V12 is something that nothing else can really match. I love the way this car sounds, not only from the engine, but from the sounds of the gated shifter. So the V12 in this car is six and a half liters, makes 631 horsepower, and the car will go 211 miles per hour. Haven't quite gotten there, but ventured into the 190s several times, and it is remarkably stable and confidence-inspiring at speed. As you get a lot of cars up near the limit of what they can do, they get really darty, really nervous, they vibrate, they make terrible noises. These things just get stuck to the ground. That wedge design that you can draw with a single movement of the pin obviously pays off in the aerodynamics, and it does push it down, it does feel great, and it sure does go fast. Now this car, I've had several of them, but again, this is my favorite one, and it's kind of the evolution of the ways that I've grown to love these cars. You know, do you want something that you can take on a normal drive where you're not going anywhere special? You may not even be able to go that fast just based on how the roads are and what, where you have to go, but that you're still going to feel like it was an event, and that's what this does. There have been many times in my life where it was the only car that I drove for weeks or months on end, and it actually does that quite well. I mean, it is a car you can take on a road trip. I've taken it on rallies. I've, you know, I drove this one home from Scottsdale after it was done being painted in clear broad. And so I love the usability, but I also love how useless the car is. And that sounds like a contradiction, but if it weren't for how compromised this car was at the things that a car is supposed to do, then it wouldn't be as special to be out in it when I can only go 22 miles per hour. And so, of course, I'm assuming kind of the normal Murcielago slouch, because if I sit up straight in the car, it's this. And that's not terribly comfortable for anybody. But honestly, I've kind of learned how to sit in them and how to drive them. There's a reasonable amount of room for my legs, and uh, I can do whatever I really need to. Now, it's not the most athletic car in the world. It is a big, heavy car. There's a significant rear weight bias, and there is a lot more torque to the back. 
than there is to the front. And so you have to be a little bit careful. And of course, every leading edge on the car is carbon fiber. So it's one of those things that you kind of have to get the hang of driving it, but there really isn't anything else like it. And everything that's cool about a Diablo or a Countach or even a Mura is also pretty cool about this car. Maybe not exactly to the same degree. Of course, I love a Mercy more, but the usability, the fact that you can start the car up and it'll do what you want it to, actually does redeem anything you're sacrificing in terms of maybe how cool a Cannonball Run Countach or a Diablo GT or something like that is. It is a car you can put miles on. It's a car I do drive a lot, and it is a car that I love. So I've thought many times about whether or not I would enjoy having an Aventador more than a Mercy, and when I was working in the dealership, that's one of the pathologies of being that close to the new car scene. You always feel like the newest, latest, greatest, biggest, baddest thing is exactly what you need to try to aim for next. But one of the greatest treasures that you can ever find in a car is not feeling that anymore. And even though I go through cars pretty often, I love to think about a car in terms of whether or not I can see myself owning it five, 10, or 20 years from now. And I think this is really, apart from the CL55 from the Cannonball record, the only car that I have felt like I can't imagine parting with it forever. Like I, I, I know that they're gonna go up in value, it's gonna become more valuable, but I don't wanna have to think about trying to buy it back at whatever it's gonna be worth five or 10 years from now. And that's always a good idea. A rarity, appreciation, investment status should never make you buy a car that you weren't already going to buy, but it's a great perk or it's a great way to decide between two or three cars that you could see yourself being happy to own. And so the fact that this car has gone up in value since I bought it, that it's helped, that the appreciation of the previous ones has helped to pay for this one, all of that just makes it a whole lot easier to enjoy putting your foot down and having an absolute blast. Now, when these cars came out, the fact that you have to remove the motor and the transmission to do a clutch or to service a lot of things was really scary. And it was actually seen as one of the first kind of supercars that was scary to have to maintain, like older Ferraris and things like that. But now that all the other cars have gotten so technological and there are crazy suspensions that can fail and there's double clutch gearboxes that can require rebuilds and there's engines that are so high strung and have such a high specific output that we know that the longevity is not necessarily going to be there, it's actually made Mercy's seem like cheaper cars to run by comparison. And so now the worst case scenario in this car would be a differential failure, maybe a gearbox failure, or potentially a bottom end engine problem. All of those things can be sourced from crash cars and things like that for less than 10 or 15,000 bucks. And so that's still a ton of money, but on a percentage basis of what this car is worth, it's a whole lot better than a $30,000 gearbox in a 458 or any of the litany of things that could happen to most McLarens. So I don't have to worry about an awful lot. And there are a lot of people that are qualified to work on these cars. It is becoming a little bit harder for authorized dealers to work on them because a lot of the more seasoned technicians that worked when these cars were new have either retired or cycled off or gone elsewhere. And so I use an independent mechanic who used to work for Lamborghini Atlanta while I was there. He does great work. He's very economical and he makes me feel like I can drive it as much as I want. In a car like this, you have all the performance of a Ferrari Enzo or the hyper cars that kind of preceded it, but you don't have to worry about hybrid assist packs and all the other things that could make the thing more complicated. I mean, the car doesn't have an active suspension, doesn't have an electronic gearbox, doesn't have electronic steering assist, doesn't have all the things that we think make cars better, and by some magazine racing metrics they might, it actually makes the car feel very connected, feel very much like you're a part of the experience, and lets you kind of take ownership over getting somewhere successfully without finding a ditch or a tree somewhere. And so I feel like the fact that there are so few of these cars still running, so, I mean, they, it seems like every day on Instagram you see somebody that crashed a big V12 Lambo, is, is kind of, that makes it feel almost like a badge of honor that you've kept them all going. I did almost crash my first one the first weekend that I had it, but since then, no close calls. And so, you know, the all-wheel drive is nice. It's not going to be a big car that you're going to slide off in some crazy donut or hang a huge drift in. 
but it's very much a car that you can enjoy every mile in. And, and obviously to me, there is a trophy aspect to this car, not necessarily because owning an exotic car is something worth celebrating, but the fact that I was able to influence the marketplace for manual LP640s. And that's really what started VinWiki. The list of VINs of manual LP640s that I put on my website that changed the way people looked at the cars, that changed the market value of the cars, is really the biggest thing that, that I feel like this car sums up. The fact that I own it pretty much for free after the appreciation of the last two, and the fact that people, when they think about Mercy's, they think about me. When Rob Dom was here, he told me that, you know, the fact that when people think about Diablos, they think about the fact that he owns one. He's kind of one of the torchbearers of the car. That really resonated. I mean, you know, we, we grew up loving these cars. This car came out when I was 16, 17 years old. And so the, there's nothing that can ever be cooler than that. The cars that were really cool when you were an impressionable youth are the cars that we, you know, always kind of strive for, we dream about. And that's what this is. It is everything that a dream car should be. It looks like it, it sounds like it, it drives like it. And to everybody around and to definitely being you behind the wheel, there is nothing better. So thank you guys so much for coming along for a ride. I hope you love this car as much as I do. If you don't, that's fine because I love it enough for the two of us. I don't think I'll ever own another one because I think this will be the one to keep. The last car wasn't quite nice enough to be that thing that you would own forever, but I believe this one is. So thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe for more. I'm gonna try to spend some time walking through some of the stories, the backstories, and why I love a lot of the cars that I've owned. But either way, thanks so much for taking the time to watch the video today. Take care.